Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise, I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. Today I'm here to bring you a wig review in partnership with Name Brand Wigs. This is Gabor Make a Statement in the color SS Iced Latte Macchiato. And the code for that is GF17-22SS. This is a rooted, ashy blonde, and a new short style, so I'm excited to tell you all about it. So if you want to know more about this piece right here, or this color, inside and out, then stick around. I am so grateful to Name Brand Wigs for partnering with me on this review. It is so fun to show you guys new styles. I love to review everything in every color, in every style, and in every price point. So if you've never visited Name Brand Wigs, I highly encourage you to check them out. Their website is namebrandwigs.com. This wig is linked in the description. They're wonderful. They have great support. You can email them, support at namebrandwigs.com if you need help choosing a style or choosing a color. They even have a phone number at the website so that you can call them if you'd like. They're great. I've been a customer since the very beginning of my wig wearing journey. All right, everybody, let's take a look at Make a Statement from All Sides. Now, I wore a turtleneck on purpose, and the reason I did that was because I wanted to show how beneficial a short wig can be with high necked shirts or scarves. I know that some of my wig sisters who watch my videos maybe don't wear short wigs typically, but did you know that they could really be beneficial in the winter when you wear clothes like this? First of all, this piece here has length in the front, so it doesn't look as short uh, with the length. And then when you throw on a high necked shirt, it really doesn't look as short. I didn't used to be able to wear short wigs, but I've since learned ways to wear them that are so helpful. And you know, to be truthful, clothes like this can be really hard on synthetic wigs especially on heat friendly synthetic, which this is, but on regular synthetic as well. So having a short style for when you do wear your turtlenecks or your scarves can be so great for the fibers and can help that piece to last longer. So just some food for thought when it comes to short wigs. Okay, before we talk too much about this style, I want to give you guys a little bit of a caution. Well, I don't know if it's a caution or if it's just the piece that I have actually. This wig has a ton of flyaways. Can you see those? I have tried to use just water to tame these flyaways and sometimes that can help if you have a lot of flyaways. A little bit of water can really tame those down. It is not working on this piece. So, and I do also have a ton of these little hairs that keep like right there just wanting to hang in my face no matter what I do. And so I'm ending up just plucking them out and it seems to be a bit of a losing battle. This one I can't even grab. Can you see what I'm doing right there? So I hesitate because it could just be my piece. You might get one that doesn't have any of these issues, but I do feel like I need to mention it just in case. I will do a Tip Tuesday showing some different techniques that you can use. If you do get a piece that has a ton of flyaways or little annoying hairs that keep going in your face and you can't get them redirected, so stay tuned for that because that is something that can happen with wigs. And you have a couple of choices. You can either send it back or sometimes you aren't aware of that until after you've messed with it a little bit and now you can't return it or maybe it's a clearance item or a secondary market item. So don't fret. There are things that you can do. I just didn't want to do any of those things before I reviewed the piece. Using water was acceptable in my opinion, but nothing more than that. So I will make a tip Tuesday for you guys and show you how you can work with a piece that has a lot of flyaways. So hopefully that will help. So what I find unique about this style, well, there's a few things. One of them is all of these choppy layers and you can see some of that choppiness back here. It is definitely an edgy cut. If you don't like choppiness, if you don't like some of the ways that the chops stick out back here, 
I think you can tame them some by taking heat to it. So this is heat friendly. And so you can take heat to it. You could use a hot comb, you could use a hot airbrush, you can use a comb and a hair dryer, and just try to get those to lay a little bit flatter if you don't like that, but you like everything else about this style. The other thing is with all of this choppiness, there is a fair amount of volume on top. So there is permatease right up in here. Really not a few little crimpy fibers back here, but nothing serious or, or poofy and nothing really on the sides, but you've got some permatease up here and that is giving this a lot of lift on the top. So beside, but between the sort of edgy choppiness and the lift on top, this definitely um, has a very polished, but yet fun and edgy profile. This is a style that if somebody wanted to achieve this with their own hair, you'd be putting all kinds of thickening product in and you'd be doing some, you know, round brushing and blow drying your hair upside down and back combing. That's what this reminds me of. When I looked at the manufacturer photos, th this looked like it had a, a way more pronounced bang than it does on me. That's a really good example um, with how wigs can look so different from person to person and you may experience that you may watch reviewers and then purchase that wig and it doesn't even look like the same wig on you your head shape your head measurements how long your face is how much clearance you have between your head and your shoulders how much neck you have all of that will really play a role my assumption is either they st heavily styled the wigs in that photo shoot or the models that they use have com a completely different measurement than I have. So if you're looking at this and you want to wear a full bang, depending on your measurements, you may have to trim that bang up. I do have a video where I show you how to do that. It's really quite easy, even if you have no hairstyling experience. So stay tuned uh, or actually look in the description for a link to that video and I'll link it for you. Now, like I said, this has a permatease, not a, a lot, but enough that it gives it some volume on top. And it also has what I would consider you know, it's not a heavy hair density. It seems like there's a fair amount of hair right up here, but it's not heavy or full back here. So I'd say it's more of a moderate hair density. Now this piece has a mono part and a lace front. Gabor makes some really great lace fronts. This one is a really, really good one. It is a rooted color, but you can see they brought all that blonde up to the front so that you really can't see any dark knotting with those roots. And that lace goes to right about there. So it's a good, you know, somewhat extended lace front. So if you're not a bang wearer and you want to play with this and get this hair up off your forehead, you've got a beautiful lace front to do that with. And again, because you can take heat to this, you can really work on this to make it your own. I personally love using a hot comb on a heat friendly wig like this right at the bang area to get more lift in it and I, of course I do have a video on that as well which I will link in the description. Let me just take this off and show you the inside of this cap. So there's your mono part again it's a left going over to the right mono part lace front soft ear tabs with bendable stays extended nape Velcro adjusters, the rest of it is open wefting. I think this will probably be a pretty cool wig. It's not, because it's short, it doesn't have super heavy density, it doesn't have a lot of permatease, and permatease can actually act like an insulator, and the open wefts, that will all help. So as you can see, this one, at least the piece I have, you know, needs a little coaxing to get those fibers to go in the right direction. This whole front is just really kind of PC. I definitely think using a little bit of heat on that will help as well with some of the flyaways. So again, stay tuned for Tip Tuesday. I will show you how to work with a wig like this or any other wig that has some of the same challenges. Um, if that is something that you're faced with. You can really tuck this one easily, you know, and it really does change up that look a lot. This is one of those short wigs that I think will look so cute with a headband. I absolutely love wearing wigs with headbands, especially short wigs. I think it just makes them fun. 
I think it makes it, it increases the realism. And if the volume up here is a bit more than you can take, especially if you're new to the wig wearing journey, to put a headband on that will really help tamp down that volume. So I don't want you to be afraid to try new styles because you can always style them. And again, a headband is the perfect way to style a wig and help you get used to either a shorter style or more volume. It's just so fun to do that. I will make sure my Amazon store is linked in the description and I have all kinds of headbands like this linked that I have purchased. I've purchased a lot of them and I think they're great. So if you want to check those out, you can look in the description. Let's talk about fit. So good. Gabor wigs fit very, very true to average. I have a 22 inch circumference and I can often cinch in Gabor wigs a little bit and they tend to have really good stretch and this one has really, really good stretch. Um, I do get some extra cap up here and I have a very petite over the top of my head so I'm very average in my circumference at 22 inches and very petite over the top of my head. So if you are very, very average, this is going to fit you just fine. Maybe even a little bit bigger than average, I think it'll be okay. If you're petite, um, you may have to tighten it up in the back. You may actually have to take a few wefts in so that it will fit over the top of your head. I actually have a whole bunch of videos saved in my other people's tips and tricks playlist that will show you how to make a wig cap smaller. I've not yet done a video on that, but I would like to at some point. But in the meantime, I have linked some good videos for you in that playlist and I will link that playlist in the description. I have a lot of good tips and tricks in that playlist that I haven't personally made videos on. Let's one more time kind of talk about this style before we talk about the color. So as you can see, this is a very choppy, razored style. We've got length in the front, so it's somewhat of an A-line, but it's not a traditional A-line because of all these layers. So I really think you could have a lot of fun playing with this style. If you wanted to use Peace Out Cream or some sort of styling product, you can really change up that look. One day you can do this, another day you can tuck it and smooth it out, another day you could take a clip and put it up in the front, you can wear a headband, you would be surprised by how many styles you can get out of a short wig like this. So really, it can help a lot for you to feel like you're normal with your hair again when you can play around with a wig and style it up. All right, let's talk about this color, SS Ice Latte Macchiato. Again, that code is GF17-23SS. So this is a rooted color, and the SS means shadow shades. It's a more of a shadow root, and they do a great job of making it look more like a shadow. Now, this color is has a, it, it's a dark root, they do not give us a color code. I'll take this off and I'll, well, why don't I just do that right now? And we can kind of look at this together. Now, it's always hard to tell what the code may be on a root because when it's blonde like this and there's some very pale blonde in here, that can make the rooting look a lot darker than it actually is. This is definitely, so when I pull the hair apart, and I can see into that root a little bit, it doesn't look quite as dark as it does when the hair goes like this and, and, and becomes more of a shadow. So my guess is this is maybe an eight, maybe even a 10. I don't know that it's a super, super dark root. And then you've got a, a blend of honey blonde. So the base is like a honey blonde and we've got a lot of pale blonde in here. This is, um, I would say this is a neutral to ash color definitely leans on the ashy side, but it really doesn't look gray. It looks like a muted blonde, no warmth, no strawberry, no gold, and a lot of pale blonde in here. It's almost like uh, somebody took a, took a blonde and really toned it. That's kind of what I think about when I see this. And because of the root on this, it makes it very wearable for a natural brunette like me. I'm not blonde, I'm not even close to blonde. I'm generally, my, my uh, bio hair is more of a dark brown. There's another one of those flyaways right here. 
I don't know if you can see those on camera. I guess I'll know when I play this back. Um, so, you know, I'm more of a dark brown, and but I find that I can wear these more ashy blondes when they've got a root like this. All right, everybody, let's get outside so you can see this color outside. Thank you, Name Brand Wigs, for sharing. Make a statement with me so I could share it with all of my wig sisters. If you guys have any questions, let me know. And again, stay tuned for a Tip Tuesday using this wig. I'll talk to you guys in my next video. All right, friends, here we are outside. It's snowing and it's windy, but you get to see this color in very overcast outside light. See that root? turn here. This one definitely has a lot of flyaways. I think, you know, wearing it, um, maybe using some water on it, maybe some styling cream or, or styling spray, all of that will help with those. It'll, it'll settle down after a while. Whew. Oh my goodness, the snow is blowing off the roof into my face. <laughs> Hope you guys got the look that you were looking for. Thanks for watching.